afternoon and welcome to the Grace of Westminster Friday uh, live stream. I'm Becky Danese. And I'm Konstantin Kochkin. I honestly thought he was going to say something else there. <laughs> uh, hope you're all well. Thank you for joining us. Just having a very quick look. I am so sorry to hear that you were flooded, Terry, and that some of your vinyl was, was flooded. Oh, not, not vinyl. Not vinyl. Um, I'm glad the cameras are all okay, though. Um, and hello to everyone else that has joined us. Now, um, we are talking about secondhand today. It's going to be very exciting, I assure you. <laughs> we're talking about the... Um, well, we have a flash promotion at the moment, which you might have seen on our website, and we thought we would just discuss our current kit bags, what we picked up in the last kind of year from, from the secondhand department, and also um, our wish lists. Yes. Yes, what's next? Um, I mean, working here, we've got some perks. <laughs> we have a few perks. We yeah. have you know, first first call on things, potentially. First dupes. But actually, yes. not always. I usually, you know, if someone's waiting for something, I let them have it first. I don't. Not me. It's <laughs> just yeah. selfish. Um, if you have not joined us before, please do subscribe uh, by pressing the so subs this. yeah subscribe to that to by pressing the subscribe button down below and the little bell icon so you know when we're streaming. Um, hopefully, this is going to go off without a hitch. We had a little network problem right before streaming, which was why we were about thirty seconds late. But uh, fingers crossed, it'll all be well. Um, also, if you'd like to contribute to the coffee fund, <laughs> the Becky fund. <laughs> No, the coffee fund is very important. Um, then you can do so by using the dollar sign. It's over here. Oh, I thought you were doing it's the there dollar sign. Somewhere. No, no. That's not the dollar okay. sign. It's no. there. <laughs> the dollar sign okay. is somewhere on the screen. Oh, it's down there? Okay. Um, show us what I know. So you can do that as well. Um, or if you're watching it after the fact, you can use the PayPal me link, which we've got on the bottom. So, as I like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> and you're just happy to be here. I'm going to talk about my kit bag first. Um, a lot of you who have been following us throughout the duration of the uh, the lockdown and while I was streaming at home know that I have a beloved FM3A. This is actually not my FM3A. This is one from the secondhand department of Grey's. But you will have seen it uh, in the flash. And I thought I would talk about the lenses that I have, that I recommend, um, and what I put with this camera. So. Okay, first question. Yes. FM3, how many megapixels is that? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's a hundred megapixels. No, I see questions that. coming up. Is it BSI or FSI? <laughs> it is a uh, backside illuminated sensor, yeah. <laughs> um, so now this one was produced. Uh, the reason that I love this is probably because it's all of Nikon's technological advances in terms of film cameras put into it's their final mechanical camera. Um, I had an FM2N for a long time. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't have upgraded if I didn't work here, but because I do... You've got some perks. <laughs> because I do, I lusted after this for about five, five or six years, just if you want to get a closer look. I do also have a chrome version. Some people prefer the black version. Um, you prefer the black version, yes, yeah. Yes, because I'm professional. <laughs> There's uh, the black versions I find are harder to maintain. So mine has a little gash on the base, which was actually, I bought it like that. If it had been a black one, that would have worn right down to the brass. But on mine, you can barely see it. So It's called patina. Yeah, patina, that's yeah. right. So that's the FM3A. Now, a lot of you know that I have several lenses. <laughs> Just a few. Mm. The widest lens that I use is the uh, on on the FM three A specifically is the twenty eight three point five. Now we don't actually have a twenty eight three point five here, so I can't show it to you. But I have the twenty eight three point five pre AI that's been converted to AI, so that goes on there nicely. Another favourite of mine, which I speak about often, is the 55 1.2, or its later sibling. They only produced the 55 1.2 very briefly for AI, mm -hmm. and then they went over to 51.2. That's right, and these are 58 as well, isn't it? That's the knock. That's the yeah, yeah, which, uh, no, I don't have the budget for that, but there we go. So that's the 50 mil 1.2. I think I've mentioned to a few of you the reason why I like the 55 is because it focuses ever so slightly closer by like, about five centimeters. <laughs> but that's makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. Um, so it focuses slightly closer with the with the 55 than the 51.2. But Nikon still make this one brand new. So you can buy it secondhand, but you can also buy it brand new. 
from Nikon. Uh, much more expensive if you buy it new, so why not buy it second hand? This is one that we have. Uh, so I've got 28, mm -hmm. 55, and then I jump. I'm not a big fan of the 85s. I've been thinking of getting one, mm -hmm. but I don't have an 85. I don't own a single 85 mil lens. So I jump straight over to the 105. See. 105 2.5. Oh, that's a gem, isn't this it? This is a gem. This is one. This is the, as I think I've mentioned before, this is the Afghan girl lens. It's the very, very famous portrait that was done with this lens with an AIS version, I think, because mm -hmm. it was in the late 70s. This version that I have here is actually a, an AI. The version that I own is a pre AI converted, but I have not found the optics to be dramatically different about the same them. isn't it yeah they they didn't change much between them so i've got like the last version of the of the pre ai converted to ai this is an ai we've called this a vg minus it's actually in pretty nice nick but we're quite fussy as you know about our grading so um anyway so that as a portrait lens for me is ideal fits in the pocket it's not too big i'm just going to have a very quick look at the at the Who's that in the mirror? That's Fatini. <laughs> she's just, she's behind the scenes making yes. sure that everything goes off without a hitch. You know, if something blows up, then she goes and puts the fire out while to Big someone, brother. so that we can keep live streaming. Thank you very much, Ian, for your contribution to the Coffee Fund. We took down Marilyn this week. Um, we will bring her back for next week <laughs> or something similar. To cover um, my face. To cover your face every so often when someone contributes to the Coffee Fund. So thank you very much for that, Ian. Uh, right, and my last manual focus lens is this one and it's exactly this one in fact it's not this is not my lens this is <laughs> this is a 200 f4 ai now they did an ais version as well i have the ai the funny thing about this lens is it's 200 mil and it fits in in your pocket basically <laughs> in a large pocket, in a large pocket it fits yeah. in my my jacket pocket oh, it just drop the lens cap that's always good it fits <laughs> it genuinely does fit in the pocket so i tend to use this one if we're going for a walk and I know I want to do some landscape stuff but I may want to shoot something further away. I've I've shot birds with the 200 f4. Yeah, um, how's it autofocus on this? Autofocus is so fast. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, you do have to trust your eyes or have a magnifying eyepiece or in the case of the FM3A I actually don't use the split screen. I find it too distracting I know so how do you focus then <laughs> I just trust my eyeballs I have quite with contact lenses you never trust your eyeballs. I have, with, with contact lenses I have quite good vision thank you very much Nick and thank you Terry for your contributions to the coffee fund uh, the term is in the flesh not in the flash it was a Freudian slip <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed that you noticed um, Baxter's got an F3AF on his wish list Ooh, Ooh. That, that's a good one that is an unusual camera we don't see those very often quite yeah. Uh, so, sorry, missed the start. That's okay. We'll forgive you, Phil. And the 55 is brilliant. Uh, are the optics in the 28 AI AIS the same as the 2.8D lens? Or the 28D lens, sorry. Um, so, in the 2.8 versions, yes, basically the optical construction is the same between the AI, the AIS, and the AFD. The build quality of the AFD, as some of you might know, is a little bit more plasticky than the manual focus lenses. Um, the AI, just to be super nerdy, has a longer focus throw. So it takes longer to get from one end of the focus to the other, which some people quite like. I quite like that. I <laughs> don't know why. It takes longer to get there. But like, oh, bit of extra turn. I'm going to leave for five minutes <laughs> till you finish. <laughs> until I finish you know. talking about that. Yeah. Um, and then the AIS has a shorter throw, but the actual picture quality is essentially the same. Um, so that's my manual focus lenses. All right, can I ask you a good question? Of course you can. So if I'm a young aspiring artist yes. who grew a moustache, <laughs> loves coffee, <laughs> yes. and listens to audio tapes, not okay. even vinyl, so okay. is that the setup that you would recommend? I would say you'd have to have, I, th I think you'd need quite a bit of money so it depends on how 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 much they pay you at the mm -hmm. coffee shop that you're working mm -hmm. at. <laughs> but um, I would suggest if you are a young aspiring photographer or someone that has not yet gotten into film photography or you're an 
old school film photographer that sold all your gear and kind of wants to start over again. The FM series of cameras are very good, also the FE series of cameras. I've mentioned this on a few previous streams, how the FE, when it first came out, was actually more expensive than the FM. It was the camera that had aperture priority in it, whereas the FM is very, very stripped down, very basic. But these days, they tend to be about the same price, or the FM2N can be slightly more expensive than the FE2s. They've just got a bit more of a, a reputation and a bit of a cult following. So FMs, if you want something super lightweight, if you do want to, to go in with something slightly bigger and heavier, you can have a look at the F3 series. Um, but if you're really looking for the cheapest SLR you can, the nickel mats are great. Oh. And they're so inexpensive. Um, obviously, they were made in the 60s. So the the metering isn't necessarily the most reliable thing in the, the world. The metering is still in 60s? The, the metering is still 60s generation metering. Um, but a nickel mat, like let's say FT2, FT3 or FTN, will be under 200 pounds easily like we've i think we've got yeah. a couple for about 125 uh 50 mil f2 pre ai will also be under 100 pounds so you can put together quite a nice film kit for very little um and still have an excellent camera i would say absolutely i mean if you just want a manual focus film camera and the money is not object get fm3 and then just choose one or two lenses that yeah. suit your style. So let's say, I like 51A Pancake. It's a nice little lens. It's a yes. good documentary street style I'm lens. I'm going to grab one of those while you're here. Let me just see what the... There you go. To the, yeah. There you go. I can see how far I go out of the frame. Here you should right? go. Um, and then, yeah, 28 to 35 mil, if you prefer. Again, nice street life lens, documentary style. You can shoot color black and white. Both are good choices. That's your... Uh, it's not going to get face recognition. So I need you to refocus. <laughs> It doesn't have face. <laughs> it doesn't have a face. This is the lens that Constantine's talking about. It's a little 51.8 pancake. It really Teeny is a tiny. pancake lens. It's very tiny. Um, ooh, speaking of pancake lenses. 45. 45. That's this another is, one. This is the lens that actually came out with the FM3A. It's actually got a CPU chip in the bottom. Can you see that? Uh, yeah, so this go. one can be used on your digital Nikon SLR mm -hmm. and you won't need to create a custom profile for it. It will just recognize it automatically. Which, uh, which is quite handy. And it's so tiny. <laughs> it's really, really little. I'm actually going to just pop it on the camera. There we go. Look at that. That's actually how they used to sell them yeah. as a kit with this lens. Yeah, exactly. The black versions are slightly rarer. I'm just going to hold that up so you can see it there. Um, the black versions are a little harder to get hold of, of the lens, um, and they tend to be quite a bit more expensive. But the the chrome version, I think, looks really nice on a chrome camera. Yeah. I know a few people that bought these for digital cameras when they, when they started coming onto the second-hand market as well. I used mine on D700 at the time, uh, and yeah. it is very sharp, wide open. Ah, interesting. So... So that's my film haul, if you say, if you if, if you like haul, that's the right word, isn't it? I hauled it <laughs> from Grace. Um, the other camera that I have, which is also a film camera, a few of you know, uh, is the F6. I love that camera. It's so nice. Mm. <laughs> I do. I use G lenses on that most of the time, though, if I'm honest. I do have, obviously, I use the manual focus lenses as well, but I quite like the just the ergonomics of that body um anyway a lot of you have already yeah. got f6s i think we still have quite, we have quite few photographers shooting on f6 um, yeah. sasha gusov is That's still right, shooting sasha. on He's, f6 he shoots a lot of street photography and reportage kind of stuff and he keeps buying them every three years and he buys them every three years just to be on the safe side not that there's anything wrong with the previous ones just just in case uh john asks has the fm2 got a faster flash sync so the fm2 uh, has faster flash sync than the FM. The FM2N, the, the N version, has the faster flash sync than the FM2. And to be honest, the only difference between an FM2 and an FM2N, you can't see it on the front. It's actually on the serial number on the back, it will say N in front of the serial number. So if you wonder uh, whether it's an FM2 or 2N, just have a look at the serial number. Hopefully that answers that. Is it true that 21 megapixels equals film quality? Hmm. I don't think it's as quantifiable as that, to be honest. Um, I mean, when the D800s first came out, people were saying that 36 megapixels yeah. was closer to film quality. Uh, David's got an F6, that's right, yeah. Well it's done, Dave. a beautiful camera. Uh, the 120 Sky camera is more of a dream than a wish list. 
Uh, haven't seen images of one that isn't in the Nikon Museum. No, ditto, Matt. I haven't seen, I've never seen one in real life at all. One day I'll get over to the Nikon Museum and, and see it in person. Um, Andy says, yes, Constantine, the 58 knocked F1.2 is very expensive. Eight and a half grand in Australia. Not for everyone's budget. It's about half that cost. Yeah, come UK. here. <laughs> I don't know what the exchange rate's like, so maybe that's the same thing. It's about half that cost. Uh, right, so that's my... Yes, I've talked about film now. Yeah, <laughs> I stopped talking about film. quite extensive coverage of I know, F6. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I didn't want to... Well, I've talked about the F6 a lot during, during live streams, um, particularly when I was at home, because... I had it and I yeah. was like, look, it's an F6. So I think you've probably heard enough about that. But I also did a review in the last Nikon owner magazine, not the last one, 68. Um, so if you're a Nikon owner subscriber and you haven't downloaded that issue yet, you can hear me rave about it a little bit. <laughs> now, if you can't afford F6, but you still want a very good autofocus Nikon camera, F100, where it's at. Yes. F100 was my first Nikon camera That's I ever right. bought. I saved the whole summer working in New York, <laughs> and I spent, I think, $600 and bought my F100. They're about the same price now, I think. I think so. Uh, the thing about this camera is it pretty much gives you, I would say, 90% of what F6 gives you. Yes, so admittedly. At a fraction of a cost. Yeah. Still very fast, so it's focused. Amazing build quality. Those were used in wars, like in the Iraq War, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, basically, was really good choice by reportage photographers. So mm. uh, a lot of reporters use them. And it's a lot smaller and lighter compared to, let's say, something like F5, which is a beast. Yeah, the F5 is a very chunky camera, and it's lighter. The F100 is lighter still than the F6. Um, I mean, the main advantage to the F6, I would say, is the fact that it has that ITTL flash capability. Yeah. If you're not using sort of creative lighting system, then that's not going to make a huge difference to you. You can just get a flash that's workable and compatible with the F100. But yeah, otherwise, it's great. Um, Andre says, keep up the great work. I'm a Happy Maltese customer who purchased a D4S and a 200 F2 from Grays. Well, thank you. Thank you, Andre. That's, um, that's very nice to hear. And I'm glad that they're still going strong. Yeah, we appreciate it. And thank you to Gary for your contribution to the coffee fund as well. Coffee's all around. I think everyone will be allowed to have a coffee today. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, Nikon N80. Ah, so Larry's referring to the N80. So over F80 here, UK. yeah, we called it the F80. Um, so as a lot of you will probably know, in in Europe um, and the UK, a lot of the cameras that say F at the beginning of them, in order to differentiate regions, Nikon called them N over in the US. It prevented grey imports. It was, um, and it also helped them in terms of warranties to work out what region cameras were from. So N80 or F80, they have F90X or N90X. Yeah, you know, we don't get a lot of F90Xs and F80s and well. F80s, yeah. and I wonder. Maybe it's just because people hang on mm. to them. Um, I think so. The, I would personally, between the two, I would choose F80 personally. Mm. And the reason for that would be that F80 would have front and back command dials, and which the... F90 doesn't have. Ah. So if you want to control yes. the aperture via the body of the camera, F80 would be a good choice. And it's also smaller and lighter. Yeah. Okay, good. I haven't seen one in so long. And then they had the little F60 as well, which was like a mini oh, yeah. version. So that would be equivalent of, let's say, D3000 series now. Yeah, exactly. In film terms. Any comment on the 5cm 1.1? Ooh, Jeff, such a great <laughs> question. Uh, comment. What can I say? We have one of each. We have both the internal and the external mount version. Would you like um, some? <laughs> would you like one? They are both beautiful lenses. To be honest, I know um, only one photographer that shoots with one regularly at the moment and he tends to adapt all these lenses for his <laughs> like a body <laughs> he has uh, he uses all of these old heritage rangefinder lenses and then adapts them for modern digital cameras which is kind of interesting but very very rare in fact there is a picture yeah they're both the you've got two versions thank you so um you've got the external mount version and the internal mount version, and that's what they look like. Um, let's see if you can actually see that. They're not, let's just put them that way, and then maybe you'll be able to see better. Can you tell the difference? Oh, that's got a lens cap on it. Um, but as I say, it's an incredibly rare lens. We happen to have one of each version, <laughs> so not that rare for us, but um, they're not something that we would want to really part with in a hurry. Uh, so. I think we've made them quite expensive for that exact reason, but they're not that easy to get hold of. Tony Hurst, as you probably know, the photography of Tony Hurst, I mentioned it last week, that book 
that we had has a picture and I think he's got nine of them in one photo. That's probably the most I've ever seen in one place uh, since they were manufactured. So, oh, thank you so much, Richard, for your contribution to the coffee fund. I never work out how much that is, but I think that's <laughs> the at least the equivalent of one and a half or two coffees over here. So thank you very, very much. Uh, 100 pounds? No, it's not 100 pounds. No. <laughs> he told me once, but I've forgotten how much it is. Um, so here we go. F801. We've got yes. F90X fans. Yeah, so there's, I mean, there are so many choices on, on, the, on the film autofocus body kind yes. of side of things. I talk about the F6 because I have it and I've used it a lot. You've used the F100. I find the F5 and the F4 just like too bulky. Mm, and you like the best. And I like the best. <laughs> you know me. Right, enough of that. Now we're going to talk about what you've managed to pick up over yeah. the last sort of 12, 12 to 18 months. Yeah, let's talk about real things. <laughs> Digital <laughs> photography. Such a snob. <laughs> no, I've got FM3A black uh, with 518 and I do ah. have F100. Uh, and while I don't use my F100, it has a sentimental value to me, so I will never sell it. It's the same one that you had in New York. Yes, wow. yes. And it's got a sticky back, oh, which I can't get rid of. Special, but. yeah. I've exactly. heard a few people have commented on how to get rid of that one of these so days. So what do you do? Uh, surgical spirit, I think. Yeah. and a lint-free cloth. Surgical removal? Yeah, <laughs> surgically <laughs> remove it. Uh, you do, back. I mean, unfortunately, Ed's got an F100. Um, unfortunately, I think if you use surgical spirit, you do end up taking off a yeah. layer of the plastic, but it's that oxidized rubber that you yeah, have to get I rid of. Yeah, I you need to air them a bit, like leave it on near the window for a week or two. Did that work? Have you tried it? No. Nah. No? Nah? Okay. Nah. <laughs> so apart from that, you picked up some digital stuff. Yes. So I had them all. So I had <laughs> all, of the all of them. Well, yeah. that's kind of the beauty of working here. When I started to work here, I pretty much tried all the cameras, all lenses, mm -hmm. and that's that was a good kind of learning experience for me because then I can see why this particular lens is better than another one. Yes. Et cetera, et cetera. But at the moment, I have this setup. So we've got G850, mm -hmm. um, which again, I had 800, 810, now it's 850. I've got H5 1.4 lens. Oh, which, yes, if you've talked about how that's your favorite. Yeah, I'm kind of portrait guy, so I shoot a lot with it. So um, I also have a H5 1.4 prime as Camera's well. Camera's up there, by the so, way. Oh, I'm looking at different. <laughs> I have too many cameras in here. So, so, so I've got two primes that I use most of the time for portrait sessions, studio sessions, a bit of editorial style photography, etc. Now, this is, if you're a wedding photographer, D850 is the best camera, in my opinion, at the moment. You can't beat it sure. with anything else. Now, the other three lenses that I have are pretty much fully Trinity, and this is going to be 14 to 24 lens 2.8, mm -hmm. 24 to 70 2.8, and 70 to 100 2.8. I've got version 2, not the current E version, which mm. is lighter. But I think if you actually go one generation behind, you definitely will get a better bargain. Yeah, so, in terms of saving money, certainly yeah. going for not the latest. Absolutely. If the new generation comes out, uh, the prices on the previous generation, they drop, so you can get a really good bargain. Yes. So let's say 24 to 70, if you're on a budget, get non-VR version, you'll save quite a bit more. Yeah. So now these three lenses, they're pretty much kind of the top choices in zoom lenses. They're the best 2.8 zooms available. They will cover pretty much all commercial work from, yeah. let's say, architecture photography to interior and Airbnb stuff. Yeah. So I've shot a lot with them. Yes, you can go with perspective control lenses, mm -hmm. but for just kind of speed of work. And sometimes um, the customers, they don't want to pay for a lot of your time, so they want it to be done fairly quickly. Yeah. You can shoot with wide-angle lens, correct distortion later on in the post, etc., etc. So 24 to 70 is fantastic for events photography, weddings, Pretty much people photography. Again, you can shoot at 70 for portrait work. You can shoot group at 24 millimeter. Yeah. Now, one thing for groups, I would say that the new version, the VR version, is much better at 24 mil. Um, it's better corrected. So if you're photographing 24 mil groups of people, they will be definitely less distorted. Or if you're doing, let's say, a red carpet event, if you need to photograph a person, you don't have much space to go back. If you're shooting full height person at 24 millimeter, you definitely will need to correct less with the new version. The mm. VR helps in low light as well. Yeah, so, yeah, that's true. Okay, that's good to know. And then, yeah, 7200, sports photography, indoor sports, um, a bit of wildlife, somewhere where you don't need to zoom far. But 
overall, these three lenses, if you're just looking for professional setup, you can just get these three lenses and D850, mm. and that's all you need to start with. Then, at a later stage, you can add a specific lens for your need. Like in my case, it would be 85 1.4. Yeah, so I, for, for weddings and concerts, which is what I tend to do, I don't do very many interiors, but I have done quite a few kind of cozy events, let's say, small groups of people. I have gone 24 to 70, 70 to 200, and then the 21.8G, because in it's terms of, setup. yeah. I mean, I, the 1424 is like, I would use that maybe once a year, so it's not a lens that I would use all that frequently, whereas the 20 is quite small and light. It is, of all of the wide angle primes, probably the, the sharpest with the least or easily correct that's a that's a hard word correctable distortion um so that's that's just me but i did find the 70s 200s quite it's quite a useful one for weddings if you are a wedding or a, an event shooter because sometimes you don't want to be right up in a person's face yeah. when you're doing portraiture and it's quite good for those those candid shots um mm, that's what i would say on that one i'm just having a, a whole bunch of comments ca came in quite a lot of people were advising how you could get rid of your sticky back uh, <laughs> orange oil <laughs> your yeah orange oil um isopropyl alcohol and, and a cloth um, i'll try that Good quality wax polish. Someone else has a sticky back as well. Okay, and then in between that, thank you for all your suggestions. That's very, very helpful. I'll also maybe try them if we've got a guinea pig camera here, we can do that. So many options, uh, Just not just 50, but also 43, 45, 55, and 58. Which one would you suggest to get? Um, clarify for me, Andy, that's in the manual focus yeah, front, is I'd that? so. Okay, uh, but not 43. I don't know 43 mil. Not for the F mount, anyway. But so it would be 45, 45, probably. Yeah, so 45, 55, and 58, as well as the 50s in the middle. I personally go with the 55. I don't, I'm not all that into the conventional 50 mil focal length, but that's just me. On my digital bodies, I don't own a 50. Yeah, I think they just slightly distort. So to go into yeah. 55, just get trees of that slight distortion especially if you're shooting close up like full face like yeah sort of. exactly so for that i use for example on my digital on the d850 i use a 60 mil um because i just don't use a 50 i had one and i never used it so uh 60 and then i have a 35 at the mm. wider end but i would say i mean if you the 58 is a very specialist lens so if you want a specialist like the 58 like the knocked you've you're using it for a very particular purpose. Um, any of those lenses with that wide aperture, they're not like general purpose lenses unless you want something a little bit more creative. Uh, but if you're looking at modern digital, so we've got the 50 1.8 and 1.4G. Yeah. The 58 1.4 um, has quite an interesting write-up, in yes. fact. And I've used one and I really enjoyed it. I just don't don't have a, a gap for it in my lenses right now, one day. <laughs> okay, here's a bit of criticism. Yes. I think if you're looking at current digital 50s that Nikon has, we're not looking at mirrorless 518, mm. but the 518G and 14G, in my opinion, they're not that great. They're, they're affordable. Yeah. But that's kind of what they're for, yes. right? They're so, like, we keep it under a certain budget kind of thing. We don't want to throw any art series lenses in this conversation. <laughs> Uh, but there are other them. options available. There are other um, other brands available there. Uh, okay, but I will say, <laughs> no, in argument, I'm not going to have an argument here. Um, so when the 35, when the Nikon 35 1.4 yeah. first came out, there was this whole like contention between the Sigma Art Series no. 35 1.4. And the Nikon 35 1.4. But 1. I like Nikon more. But d ditto. So yeah. I, someone brought one in and we, we had a little play with it. And I was like, eh, it's okay. I actually own the 35 Nikon 1.4G. And it is probably my favorite of all my G lenses that I yeah. own. So um, our series is sharper, but the Nikon one has much better rendering, in my opinion. Just the color reproduction is better and the bokeh is a lot better. Less clinical. Yeah. And uh, coming back to the 50 mils, my recommendation, yes. if you're looking at 50, and if you can afford 58 1.4 lens, do get it, because it's on another level. Yeah. Again, it's not the sharpest 1.4 available, but the rendering is fantastic. And a lot of people say that it's one of the lenses that has its own character, and a lot of people refer to the character to like lenses, yeah. so that they have that. And it's one of those lenses from Nikon that a lot of people say, I like the way it just produces the image. Yeah, exactly, because it's not always... 
a quantifiable thing. You can't say, oh, well, this one is sharper than the other one, and therefore it's better. Sometimes it's a little bit more nuanced than that. It's like, well, how does the bokeh look? How, do the, how does the color it's rendition lovely. look? Does the lens have any character? I mean, the thing that I like about the 24 to 70 is that you put it on and basically everything is going to be perfectly sharp and it's just clinically a very good lens, but it's not special it doesn't no. you know do something different to the images so hence mm. i use primes by the way a lot of um studio photographers actually prefer 28 70 2.8 lens mm. and again that's for skin tone and color reproduction so they say that the color is a little bit more neutral compared to 24 to 70 which is a little bit more contrast right so again everyone is different and depending on your style of photography it's worth trying different um, lenses out just to make your own opinion about it yeah exactly like i ended up with AI lenses in a lot of the cases rather than AIS lenses because I preferred the way they felt, the way they handled and also just the, the pictures that I got out of them. Similarly with the G lenses, you were saying a couple of weeks ago when we were doing our little homage to the D850 how some of the D lenses just produce too much yeah. fringing. or yeah, wide open. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So in those cases the G made more sense, saved you a bit of time in post-processing. Um, so that's your kind of setup it is. that you've got. Oh, I also have 1.4105, mm. um, which I'm still testing. I love the lens, but I do find that I have 85 and 105, and I use 85 a lot more. Mm. And it's probably because I shoot a lot of indoors, right. and for indoors you use 85 just a little bit shorter, so sometimes you just don't have enough space indoors, yes, and that's where 85 excels. 105 is very sharp, it has beautiful rendering, but again, I tend to shoot with my 85 a little bit more often, so I'm still contemplating about 105 personally. Well, that leads me on to my wish list, <laughs> because the 105 1.4 is at the top of my wish list. That is the next lens that I think, I don't need it. Yeah. I don't. But I'll give you a good price. <laughs> Thanks. My friend. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't actually need it in my kit bag, so I'm in a bit of a dilemma. It's like, it's a want, not a need, but... At the same time, it's such a beautiful lens. How often will I use it? See, I have these problems too. <laughs> it's not just you. Yeah, um, spoiled for choice. Completely. Well, not quite. We don't see the secondhand 105. The 105 1.4 does not come in secondhand all that often, to be honest. So it's quite a difficult one. And I'm always the first to admit I buy secondhand everything uh, when it comes to cameras. I think the only camera I ever bought brand new was the D750. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and what a waste of money. <laughs> no, and I had it for five years and I loved it. And I used it for all of my events and everything and I thought it was wonderful. And then the D850 just came in at the right time with the right price and that was it. I've got D800E brand new. Do you? A special price from Nick and UK. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah sometimes that helps. Had to as go well. straight to the top. We don't get that to anymore. Get approved, Just no. in case anyone asks for stuff. No stuff to discounts discounts they don't do them. Um, right, fourteen twenty four is a brilliant lens for interiors. David says yes. Sam loves her D eight fifty and the f two point eight, um, but seem to stick with f fours. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, if you don't want to like completely go whole hog and buy f2.8 everything i have a 24 120 f4 that yeah. i is fine for most things and it's a little bit more flexible than the 2.8 uh the 1635 f4 is also another very good Great one lens. um particularly if you need to put filters on because as you probably know the 1424 has that bulbous front element and you can't put filters on there without buying a special fancy system a lee system to do it so yeah you can't put filter on that very easily yeah. Um, and then the other one is the 70 to 200 f4, which again, mm -hmm. if you don't need 2.8, it's a really good it's very sharp. alternative. Very, very sharp. Um, it's half the weight of the VR2 version of the 70 to 200 as well. Um, nice to see the two versions of the 1.1s. Yes. Oh, I missed this comment here. Sorry. I was go going out of sequence. I still use my Nikon MS Red Sync made in occupied Japan weekly. Wow. What other rangefinder lenses would you recommend? I... Jeff, drop me an email because I've got, I've got a list and if you tell me what you've got then I can probably advise something in amongst that. We don't, you know, get, we don't get rangefinder lenses every day. No. Um, so our selection maybe isn't as big as our F mount selection but it's definitely worth asking the question. Uh, what's that? Your email. 
Oh, my, hmm. you can just send it to info at Grays of Westminster. That all comes to me. Or otherwise, Becky at graysofwestminster.co.uk also comes to me. Um, I get probably about at least 60 emails a day. So if I don't answer you immediately, it's not because I've forgotten about you. It's just simply because my fingers can only type so fast. And that's pretty darn fast, but it's still not fast enough. Um, David bought an 80 to 200 2.8. Um, bought one off me <laughs> there we go and love it there we, uh, so even without vr some of those 80 to 200s are still yeah. absolute classics even the push pull one optically is very good yeah exactly 14 to 30 f4 this is nick is a much greater convenient super wide lens yeah i have to say the z so we haven't covered z lenses in our particular sort of lineup today we don't actually we have a few if you can see back there, those are the second-hand Z lenses, and I've got a few few bodies in the in there as well. But um, we were kind of talking about what we have, what our wish list is. I do have a Z on my. I, I want. <laughs> I don't know which one I want yet. So when when uh, when the right one comes in, probably a Z five. Nah. <laughs> I don't think so. First of all, it won't come in secondhand for a really long time, and second of all. If, you, if you've if you used both, and I have used both, the Z6, just the video capabilities and also that, that just those extra frames per second are useful for me, maybe not for everybody. If I was a portrait photographer, solely... Z7. No, I was going to say Z5 would be perfect, <laughs> but sure, just still. contradict everything I say. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well um, prepared. <laughs> All right, so Phil's given us his entire Nikon history. All right. FT, FT2, EM, F301, F601, M, F801, FE, F75, F100, D70, D100, D200, D700, D810. Probably forgotten a few. Um, best camera I ever had is the FM3A. Thank you, Phil. I fully concur with that. Um, we've got, I'm um, confused, waiting for a 55 macro 2.8. We've got a few of those. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good lens. I, I wish I hadn't sold that one. Um, we have, yes, and we also have the flash sale, which I will mention the codes in a moment for you. If you, if you do want to buy something from our website, we have, have that. Now, let's just see. Love your streams. Are you doing any discounts on the 13 mil 5.6? Well, Yes, actually we are. So this is a perfect Now we're talking business, okay. So we have um, on our website at the moment, if you uh, type in the code SUMMER50, yeah, SUMMER50 will give you £50 off your basket if you spend £500 in second hand. And if you put in SUMMER100, we will pop all these codes below, by the way, but if you, yeah, so SUMMER100 will give you £100 off a basket of £1,000 in second hand. So if you do want to buy something or you're thinking maybe this is the time to do it, I think this mm. runs until the 15th of September. Did I make that up? No. For 31st of, of August. <laughs> End of March. <laughs> No, I know why. There's another company that I was looking at a promo from and it ended on the 15th of September. It wasn't uh, us. <laughs> uh, is there Summer 200 code? Summer or? 200? No. no, there isn't yet. Uh, okay. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Terry, go straight to the 500... Oh, 300 and 500 PF on your wish list. Yes, I concur with Eves. The 500 is where it's at. <laughs> It's an amazing lens. Paul loves his D750 so far, which is fantastic. Yes. Um, da, da, da. So 2.8s reach up to 200. Using F4s, I can get up to 400 combined with low light capabilities of 850. Means more versatility at dark gigs. Okay, fair enough. That's your Good setup. setup. Yeah. Excellent. Not getting any more lenses until the Z series and then the 105Z macro or 100 as it now is, is it? No, it's a 105. What's the other one that they've done? A 50. 60. No, they changed it. It's a 50 now. Ah, they're switching them up. Or 55. It's, it's a weird focal length. It's all coming. Z7 is on the wish list. 70 to 2... I think that's supposed to be... Oh, 70 to 10. That's oh, a bargain that's of 30 euros. 30 euros. That's a classic. Um, great lens. I had one on my D200 uh, back in the day. <laughs> Ed forgot the D70, he's got J1, he's got D70, he's got F100. Um, the 300 F4 PF is on your wish list, Michael. Okay, Julie noted. That is a lovely lens. I used one quite a lot when it first came out. Um, and since then, it's been 500 PF all the way. I just I just think it's such a fantastically made lens. Um, any thoughts on the Z50 as a replacement for an Olympus EM10 Mark II? I mean, I don't... Yes. Okay, good. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Are you just saying yes because? Yes. Or? So I don't have any experience with the Olympus. I have used the Z50 and as a small lightweight secondary body or if you're used to the DX, the crop format, and you do want something that is just a, the next step up, the, the Z50 is basically like a mini D7500. Um, I will be doing a little review video on it before too long. We did some footage before lockdown, but we hadn't finished recording. So now we're going to finish recording that and um, throw a video up in the next week or two uh, on the Z50, just in case you're interested. Right, might have to sell my vinyl to purchase a 500 PFR. Uh, I can buy it off you. <laughs> so send me this the link. Right what to to. So, what's on your wish list? All right. So I've got here 28 1.4 E. Oh, that's also, yes, a very nice lens. And this is a delicious lens, I can tell you that. Yeah. First of all, very sharp. Second of all, minimum distortion. Mm -hmm. It's just incredible. The way you, you, all you need to do is just look through a viewfinder to be amazed by that. Yeah. Uh, and I think personally, in terms of image quality, it's on par with 105. It's one of their top the sharpest sneak and lenses. A lot of people compare uh, these two lenses with Zeiss lenses. Yes. But the lens has autofocus. I will say, if money was no object, if money was absolutely no object, I would go 28 1.4e, 58 1.4g, and 105 1.4e. Those, I mean, like for three lenses yeah. that cover all three kinds of photography that I do, th th those would be the ultimate. I don't own any of those. <laughs> so. And you can add D870 to it. Yeah, D780, D870. Yes. <laughs> Is that what Ooh. it's going to be? <laughs> Just, uh, Just throw stir the, the pot. Don't, don't, don't yeah. do it. Don't encourage them. <laughs> okay, so I've. that's kind of my wish list, really. I mean, yeah. in terms of... Um, bodies, I, yes, I will put the flash sale coupons into the description box for you. They are already just magic, just blinked and they were there. <laughs> so if you do want to take advantage of the flash sale, then the coupons are down there and then you just go onto our website. I have to say, uh, 4,000 titles, Terry has 4,000 titles of vinyl. All right, I can <laughs> read. Accepted. Yeah, I can go through the spreadsheet, no problem. <laughs> okay, yeah. so in terms of, I I do have most of the lenses that I I want in life, but those those three I I think would be kind of next level for me. Just you know, yeah. if I was gonna, I'm thinking I would probably upgrade my twenty four seventy to the VR version. Mm. Again, I don't need it, but it's a quality of life improvement. <laughs> quality of life you know, improvement. Um, you do find. Yeah, I mean, along with the edge-to-edge -edge sharpness on the twenty on the VR, it does if you shoot wide open produce a little bit of fringing. Yeah, you have to just bear that in mind. But still, if you're using a D850, then side by side comparison, the VR is definitely sharper. Yeah. Um, I think we're tempting people with things. Is that not a good thing? I think that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the whole point. So Steve says the 200 F2 is amazing. Just picked up a used VR1 version. It, now, the 200 F2 is colossal. We don't actually have one on the shelf, but it is a very big lens. But if you wanted the best 200mm that money can yeah, buy, it's, it's nice probably... Though. I had a fashion shoot with this lens, and it just blew my mind. Yeah. It's great. You have to be on the other side of the of the warehouse, <laughs> or the studio, to take pictures with that, though. Uh, would you recommend the Z5 as a backup to the D850? So I would say depends on what you want to do with the Z5. If... For you, it's more of a stills camera, then certainly it's a very, very capable body. Um, we did a review on it. We filmed a review on it over the weekend, and that should be up hopefully next week, I think. Hopefully. Hopefully next week. Um, we were actually given a production model by Nikon for a couple of days just to actually take some real-life shots with. Unfortunately, the weather was dismal. So um, it was great test of its waterproofness <laughs> low light capabilities low light capabilities um and basically being stuck at about a thousand iso all the time because it was so dull outside but as a stills camera the z5 is very capable i would say you know for video if you are genuinely serious about video 4k with a crop factor might be a bit off-putting if you don't need that then that's not really an issue if you need the faster frames per second then have a look at the z6 but to answer your question, depending on what you're doing, yes, the Z5 could be a very good sort of, not necessarily backup, but a side camera to the D850. I agree. If you don't shoot video, 
Z5, you'll do everything else. Yeah, exactly. Um, Martin uses a Roly Teletessar 500-5.6 with his Nikon F2 AS. I've never used a Roly lens, but it's quite an interesting one. The interesting thing about some of these strange lenses, I think I, a few weeks back we did a Curiosities kind of um, live stream where I showed the mirror lenses and things like that. Some of these older lenses are kind of hidden gems. It's definitely worth uh, looking around for those odd ones. In fact, Matt Granger did a post, did a video on the 105 2.5 mm -hmm. comparing it to a modern 105 something. It wasn't a Nikon, I don't think. It was um, a very expensive 105. And he preferred the rendering from the 105 2.5 and he said he'd picked it up for like 75 dollars or something in Australia so um so yeah it's worth having a look at those like little hidden gems for something a bit unusual um what's your opinion on the 17 to 55 2.8 dx it's good yeah I had one um with my d300 for a while it's basically the 24 to 70 for the dx format so it it is a very good lens if you are looking at more modern cameras you might want to look at the 16 to 80 as an alternative it's a bit it's not as well built as the 1755 and it's a variable aperture lens it's 2.8 to 4 but um in terms of optics it is i would say on par with the 17 to 55 if not slightly better the thing is mm. the 17 to 55 second hand it's That's cheaper than so sixteen cheap. to eighty second yeah, hands. It's true. And the new price is about fifteen hundred pounds or so. It's very, very true. So, so in terms of bargain wise. Exactly. Yeah. If you Super. want if you want good value for money, then that's definitely worth having a look at. Um I have uh, other things to say. Oh yes, <laughs> the lift <laughs> friend. Before I could we could just sit here all afternoon yeah. um and just kind of carry on like this. So Apart from the flash sale, it's just worth knowing if you haven't bought from us before, we do offer a 14 day returns on all of our secondhand equipment. So if you're not happy with it for any reason, you can return it within 14 days for a refund or exchange. We also give a full 12 month warranty. That's just the standard warranty. If you're a Nikon owner subscriber, which um, I've talked about before, it's the magazine, it's run by a sister company of ours. You get either an 18 month warranty or if you do the, the special gold subscription, you get a two year warranty on second hand. So maybe, you know, sometimes the, when we're not doing a flash sale, prices might be a little bit more expensive in places. But just bear in mind that you are also getting that. Also, I mean, here is the person in charge of repairs and servicing. Um, <laughs> so when we get in a camera, what do we do with it, Constantine? Uh, cameras get sensor cleaned by default. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, yeah, just the overall kind of interior cleaning, etc. We also check, make sure that uh, the focusing works okay. Yeah. So the, we basically go through all checks, necessary checks, at whatever needs to be done, we send them for repair. Uh, for the lenses, uh, we generally try to clean the dust um, between the elements. Uh, lenses like 24 to 70, 2.8 are notorious for grindy zooms. Mm -hmm. um, we generally send them for repair as well, and this is quite an expensive repair to be had. Uh, so overall, um, we check all the equipment and we make sure that it's all functioning before we sell it. Yeah, and so in terms of our gradings, I did have someone ask today, you know, what's what's your mint versus everyone else's mint? So mint to us would mean that it's never been used. We rarely call something mint if it's not actually unused <laughs> so you've got mint then you've got mint minus excellent plus plus excellent plus excellent and vg we've got quite a few gradings i mean this um just to show you this is a vg lens and the only thing that's kind of very good about it the only thing that makes it our lowest grading is that the paint is a little bit worn on it um whereas for example this is a mint minus fm3a and i have to say it's pretty stunning i mean we we class it as 97 to 99 percent as new but it doesn't have any major marks it doesn't have any paint wear or anything like that also with film cameras i will just say um the the very common problem of the foams needing replacing both in the mirror baffle and also the light seals we get that done as well yeah. so just if you're wondering why it's uh why we pride ourselves on these things is because we also uh, get everything serviced and that's why we are quite happy to give you a 12 month warranty on your second hand kit quick question what would you yes. call an average condition uh, in our grading system av like what do we see most of or? no we say like average condition like let's say you know kind of used but not abused you know probably excellent excellent yeah, yeah i'd say maybe excellent which is our second to lowest grading actually because everything tends to be better than that if you get um a digital body which do i have one yeah 
Here we go. So this is a D600 in excellent condition. Um, it's done 60,000 shots, so I'd expect it to have some wear on it. And it's a little bit shiny over there on the grip. And it's got some marks, a few light marks on the base, something like that. I mean, that's an excellent condition camera. That's not, um, and it doesn't look like it's been completely beaten up. It just looks like a camera that's done 61,000 shots. So excellent. That gives you, literally, yeah. <laughs> so that gives you an idea perhaps of, of what we mean when we say these, these different gradings. Um, Timmy? Cottage Chimmy? Timmy? I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name. D4 versus D4S, is there a major difference? Low light performance. That was it. It was a processor. They put a new yeah. processor in it. So the low, low light performance was the, the biggest difference. I think they added a frame per second as well. Slightly fast AF, but you know, not a big difference. N negligible there. difference between that. Searching for the original box for the Nikon MS. Uh, okay, don't know if I can answer you that one off the top of my head, Jeff, but again, Drop me an email. I will find out for you. Um, I can ask Gray. That's not a problem. He's not down here with us, otherwise he'd probably be able to answer you straight away. Uh, on a camera note, had D300, D90, F100, no insurance. <laughs> okay. Yes, fair enough. I wouldn't say no, don't get any insurance, but, you know, you've got a warranty there for a reason. Also insure it just in case something untoward happens to it. Warranties don't cover accidental damage, so that's the or, or theft, obviously. So um, not a bad idea to, to do that. Uh, Andre is answering on the D4, D4S question as well. There we go. Thank you for, for answering that one. Um, before we run out of time, because I've talked about the warranty, the flash sale, we know all that. Our competition has come hey. to a close. So I have this lovely bag of goodies, which I will go through in just a moment. I'm going to show you, I need to clear the desk now, I've got so much stuff on here. I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you some honourable mentions because we did have so much talent in the drive folder. I mean, if you can spend just a couple of minutes looking through those photos, please do, because they were incredible. Who knew? Uh, we've got talented photographers in our um, live stream, the live stream group here. Um, and thank you to everyone that popped a vote on someone else's picture. We have our winner. I'm going to go through these in um, sequence. Yay, it worked. Nice funny. <laughs> so this was from John Cavanagh. This is honorable mention number one. So I actually have... Uh, four, I think, honourable mentions before the winner, just because there were so many pictures that had really lovely comments on them. This is excellent panning um, from the Windermere Pro-Am, uh, yes, it's from a bike race in 1984, which is um, really, really impressive. Now, some people actually put, this is Baxter, Baxter is a regular and um, shot on Lomography mm -hmm. film, which double I have exposure. yet to use, fantastic double exposure, and very kind of, you know, of an era, but probably actually because it was shot in Lomography film, it's probably yeah, it taken like last a, week. <laughs> it looks like a music video. It does, yeah. it really does. And that was taken with the F801, so very probably good for that one. Probably Dua Lipa in the background. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, oh, it went out of sequence. Hold on. No, not ready for that one. <laughs> Best laid plans. This is from uh, Gerard. Um, he shot this with the F100 oh, 21.8 at I F8 like on Hilford. This is a gorgeous shot. I mean, to be honest, all of these honourable mentions were very close to one another. There was one clear winner, but um, but this is a stunning shot. It's the kind of thing you could put on it's your... It's almost like a mirror like isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's very, very symmetry. interesting. Uh, so, well done for that. And then this one is from Alan Barber, which also had a lot of comments. I think also the grain in this one, just particularly, it, and the clouds and everything really struck It's almost film-like. It is almost film-like. And this was our winner which spoiler alert you saw that before i wanted to make it like a a grand appearance very very well done to graham barden thank you so much for your shot um blackpool illuminations that had the highest number of comments and uh you get a fantastic prize which i am going to show you now i think people just love blackpool isn't it that's it it's it's the blackpool charm um so graham if you could get in touch with me to collect your prize you will be winning this goodie bag we have um so this is from the nikon museum has a nikon museum 100th anniversary no sorry 60th anniversary of the f mount brochure in it has a nikon moleskin i'm not going to pull it all out because otherwise i can't put it back in again um it has a 100th anniversary leather strap in there and we also have the very nice limited edition nikon cross pen and you will get an analog wonderland voucher to buy yourself some film so 
drop me an email so that I can send that to you. And very well done. Thank you to everybody that participated in our con in our competition. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Oh, there he is. He's, he's here. Well done. So, oh, nice. um, I think... I think we've covered everything that I was going to cover. Yeah, it's a wrap. <laughs> I think it's a wrap. So Graham's going to get in touch with me to get his prize. We will work out another kind of competition before too long. We left it quite a long time between our last one and this one, but I really do enjoy giving stuff away <laughs> and seeing photographers, you know, skill and um, just the, the talent that we have in our group. So thank you. Thank you so much to everyone who participated. The link will be below for the drive folder. Um, if you want to go and have a look at the other shots that were in there. There were so many, I probably could have spent half the stream just going through the pictures, but I thought I would just pick out the ones that had the most comments. Um, thank you, John, for your uh, kind words. Thank you, Graham. As I say, if you're not watching this live and you want to contribute to the coffee fund, you can do so using the PayPal link below the video. <laughs> it's going to be down wow. there somewhere. <laughs> so you're going to I know, it. I know, really. Um, and otherwise... We thank you for joining us. We will see you again next week for another live stream. Same time. Thank uh, you very 2 much. 2.15. Thank you. Bye. Bye.